So I'm working on developing a classic survival horror game. What defines a classic survival horror game is typically widely debated. And of course, I have my own vision for what I think will make for an interesting experience. Let me set some expectations of what direction this project will go in. The game is going to be focused on player decision making. Item management, puzzle solving, facing enemies, and even backtracking all boil down to one simple concept, and that is player decision making. Forcing the player to think on the fly of their best route to traverse or what items to carry with them on their next outing ultimately adds the elements of stress and challenge that can help my game stay engaging. I want this game to be the entire package as well, to give the player reasons to replay the game, whether it be unlockables, achievements, maybe even a randomizer option. I'm also a sucker for the classics when it comes to the camera work, which means yes, this game will be using fixed camera angles with very light camera dynamics. One last expectation I need to lay down is that I am doing solo development on this project while holding a full-time job and having a family. I also attempt to make other videos for this channel, so my free time is ultimately consumed 100% of the time. So with the groundwork placed, let me show you what I've completed in the first month. Let's start off with the character controller. There will be classic tank controls and modern control scheme to help those who are younger than 30 years old. Anyone who has played a game with fixed camera angles and a modern control scheme may be worried about the awkward transitions, but hopefully the solution I have will be sufficient. I will be giving the player multiple accessibility options so they can fine tune their playstyle as well. Speaking of awkward transitions, the camera system was another hurdle I cleared. At first this was a massive headache trying to maintain cameras and their positions and switching between the correct cameras. That's where Cinemachine came into play. Switching between cameras became a breeze thanks to this built-in Unity asset. I might have made that sound like an easy thing to implement, but of course I ran into a lot of trial and error. Like why the heck is my camera pointing at the sky? Why did all my cameras turn off? And how the heck did all my cameras get deleted from my scene? Digging through documentation really helped with getting this to work, which is great because now I have a very modular system that is incredibly easy to expand upon. Another issue I ran into was figuring out how I was going to handle level design. Of course, I started off drawing out a level using graph paper, but I wanted to start blocking out a 3D model of this level. I am familiar and comfortable enough with the free software Blender for 3D modeling, so that's where I started. I modeled my level and made sure each area made sense with the camera built in Blender. This turned out to be a pretty large mistake on my end though. Blender uses focal length for its camera while Unity uses field of view. I won't bore you with the difference, but let's just say these values are not equal to each other. So when I brought my level into Unity, the proportions of the world were all messed up. I did find that there is a way to find an equivalent value of focal length compared to field of view, but it required some math I did not want to do. This is when I jumped ship from Blender, for now, and went back to Unity and installed Unity's Pro Builder package. Pro Builder is a prototyping tool to do rapid box outs for level design. I do have a few issues with Pro Builder. Mainly the fact is it's a bit of a resource hog and it likes to cause reassembly of background scripts, which just means occasionally 40 seconds of my life will be wasted just waiting for background data to update properly. After building up two areas and setting up cameras and colliders, it was time to work on area transitions. So that means I needed to figure out how I want to handle doors. Can the player just walk through the doors? Or will the player need to interact with the door and have an animation play? I'm going for the old school feel and making it so the player has to interact with the door and a short animation will play. I already hear half of you complaining about having door animations, which lucky for you, I will also give the player the option to turn these animations off so transitioning into the new area is almost instantaneous. To give the door transition some flair, I created a pixelated shader which turns the current screen into a pixelated mess during the fade in and fade out. This transition effect caused me a few problems, mainly the fact I was using the free tool Lean Tween to handle this transition effect. Although I have used Lean Tween in previous projects, I have never used it for what I was trying here and spent a good day or so trying to figure out the correct usage. Again, it took trial and error and lots of documentation reading and form surfing to get what I wanted. The last thing I did was start working on my player's animation system. I got a model and animations from the website Mixamo, which is a free online tool. Using Unity's built-in animator system, I started creating what was my version of an animation state machine. This just means when the player does something, the correct animation will play, making it feel more immersive. With all these systems in place now, I did some testing and value tweaking to make sure the character controller still felt right and to see if the cameras and area transitions still worked. 
There were a few issues that took some troubleshooting, like the player kept moving after going through a door even though the player wasn't touching the controller, or the player would randomly warp around during transitions. But eventually all these bugs were squashed. So that leads me to making this devlog. I have released a build of this prototype on itch.io, for free of course. All you have to do is click the link in the description and download the game, unzip it, and run the executable. There are no fancy screens or menus yet, you can use a keyboard or a gamepad, it's mainly for gamepads, such as an Xbox or PlayStation controller. I am aiming to do devlogs once a month along with releasing a current build of what I am working on. This way you, yes you, the one watching can leave feedback in the comments below or comments on Edge.io. There are items of this game I will be pretty firm on from a design perspective, but I will take feedback given and try to improve based off player experience, especially bug reports. That's all I have for now, so thanks for watching and as always, take care.